A list of places that offer teacher discounts. I really need to make myself one of these because I swear I always find out after the fact and I could have saved like 20% and I didn't or whatever. Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karin, and as the title would suggest, today I'll be taking you through some ideas for teaching related bullet journal spreads. As you may or may not know, I am a secondary science teacher. I currently teach middle school science, senior chemistry, senior physics, as well as being my school's creativity, activity and service coordinator. Currently I'm in my fourth year of teaching, so for the past few years I've trialled a couple of different layouts with the specific goal of helping me plan and record things for my teaching. For today's video I'm going to first take you through the layouts that I've used, then we'll have a look at some of the sample layouts I've drawn up for you, and after that we'll just talk about some of the other ideas I've collected from all of the awesome inspiration that we have either here on YouTube or other social media platforms. As usual, the equipment that I used in the setup of the pages that I made specifically for this video will be in the description box below, but let's jump in. So one of the first specifically teaching related spreads I could find comes from my second bullet journal. This journal I used from June 2017 to December 2017. And this spread, as the title probably suggests, was my term planner. This term planner, or what I now call my term scheduler layout, is one of my most favourite journal layouts. I've had one of these in every journal since this one because I find that it just works so well for me. Last year I did put a video together about this layout specifically, so if you wanted to check that one out there is a link in the corner. But essentially how it works is that we have the days of the week down the side here, so each of these larger rows is a day, and then within each of those we have one through six for the six school periods that I have. Each column is a week, so this is the Monday of week 8, the Tuesday of week 8, the Monday of week 9, the Tuesday of week 9, etc. And each of the colours represents one of my school classes. Because this was the first iteration of the term planner, I did put a key at the top, but as time's moved on, that and a couple of the other elements have changed. So we had this one, next one, next one. Another teaching specific spread I had was a to-do before term 4. Previously I had done a to-do before term 3. Couldn't find that one for this video, I'm not too sure where I put it. But I found that the to-do before term 3 spread was really really helpful, while this one I didn't quite use as much. After this I also put in a periodic table, which I didn't really reference, but I do think it looks nice. In my third bullet journal, the term planner returned, this time with a couple of changes though. So I didn't have a key at the top anymore because I was quite comfortable with which classes were associated with which colours. I also, instead of opting in to tick the boxes when lessons were done or finished, I put crosses through them. So the initial line meant that the stuff for that class was ready, whereas the second line meant that that class was over. This means that very easily at a glance I can see which ones I do have the materials prepared for and which ones I still need to work on. So we had first six weeks, up to week 11 of term 1, 1 through 7 of term 2, and you can see here I started falling off with actually filling things in because I was getting towards the end of the life of this journal. I always find that when the end of a journal approaches I get kind of lazy with filling things in. So, don't have a lot here. And for these ones, I had thought that my journal would last longer than it did, so I put the term planner scaffolds in, but of course never ended up filling it in because this is beyond the life of my planner. Another one of the layouts that I had in this journal was one of my first iterations of a topic planner. For this topic in particular, I was doing videos for each of the lessons. So for this one, I wrote the lessons down the side here in order. And then I had little icons at the top along here to represent the different things I needed to do for them. So we had a little symbol for Microsoft Word so that I could write up learning intentions and the general information that I wanted to present. We had a little PowerPoint symbol for making the slides, a little microphone symbol for doing the recording, a little scissors icon for editing, a little YouTube icon for uploading, a OneNote icon for making a OneNote page related to that lesson, and then a little tick for when everything was finished. I also put some space down the bottom here for notes, and the only note that I had was that polarity needed some work. For my fourth bullet journal, which lasted from July to December of 2018, I also put in my term planner. The only differences between this one and the last being aesthetic. 
and I also put myself in a class countdown for terms 3 and 4, just so I could really easily see how many lessons I had remaining with each of my classes. So 1 to 3 for term 3, 4 to 9 for term 3, and then 1 through 6 for term 4. You can see, again, started to fall off with filling this one in, especially considering after the end of week 2, all of my senior classes left. So the only ones that I had left over here were CAS, because they stick around until the end of the term, my Year 8 classes, and my Year 7 class. Also, because of the styles of the units that I have for my middle school classes in Term 4, I didn't really feel the need to write down what they were doing each day, because it's somewhat like a long-term project that the students manage themselves. You can see in this one I also put in a To Do Before Term 3 list, where I had each of my classes and then General up the top, so I could associate each of these tasks with each of those classes. I did a similar thing for Term 4 and before Term 1, but these didn't really get used quite as much. For the journal that I had for the first half of this year, or my fifth bullet journal, we again had my Term Planner, so really just more of the same. And then I also included some more Topic Planners. You can see that I did get a little bit lazy with filling these ones in, but the stuff we have along the top were learning objectives, success criteria, activities, slides, notes and practice sheets, videos, side pad work, education perfect, teams, so uploading the material to Microsoft Teams, OneNote, preparing a OneNote page, any labs, anything else that needed to be done, and then whether it was ready. Considering that mechanics was the first topic for the year and it's well and truly done, I can say that a lot more of this actually got finished than what was filled in. For these two units over here, I have the same tasks along the top, but this is my level 2 chemistry redox internal, and this is my level 1 phys chem ions internal. I also had one for the level 1 phys chem acids and bases topic as well. Again, it got finished, it didn't get filled in. One of the other layouts that I have that's teaching related was this topic planning, kind of like a checklist that you don't really tick off. Just more things that I have to consider anytime I'm planning a new unit. So things to consider that I put down were unit plans, education perfect work, writing skills lists, doing the slides, setting up any experiments, writing practice sheets, setting up my Excel markbooks, making assignments, figuring out the workbook pages that needed to be completed for each of the different sections of the topic, preparing notes sheets, preparing assessments, thinking about any trips that could be taken, setting up the OneNote, preparing marking sheets for the assessments and assignments, preparing any other learning activities, and then also preparing feedback sheets. This page was really just set up so that anytime I'm planning a unit or looking to tweak it, I can come back to this one and see what things I may not have remembered to put in. Now having had a look through my spreads, it's really just five things. We have the topic planning page here, my term scheduler, sometimes a before term checklist, my class countdown, and then my unit planning checklists. But of course there are plenty of other pages that you can use as well. So now we're into the section where I show you guys some of the sample spreads that I mocked up for this video. Again, as I mentioned before, any of the equipment that I used to set these up is linked in the description box below. But the first idea we have is a timetable. Now the thing with this one is, is that I do actually include a timetable in all of my journals, I just forgot to show it to you. So opening those ones back up. <laughs> in the journal that I had for the first half of this year, we had my timetable at the front with my, I don't know, explosion of stickers. <laughs> The nice part about having this one front and center is that it's really super easy for me to find, especially when I'm trying to get to class in a hurry and don't know where I'm going. And I have that exact same timetable in the front of my current journal as well. For the timetable that I set up here though, I just have the different sections of time running down the side, both with what they are, so period one, period two, morning tea, and also what times they actually run from. So 8.30 to 9.25, 9.25 to 10.20, etc. In this grid over here, it's just all of your classes and all of the other commitments you might have during those time slots. So along with my class schedule, I also have my lunchtime duty put in here, and also the lunchtime tutorial that we run on Thursdays. 
Of course, as I showed you on my timetable just before, I don't have a one week cycle, I have a two week cycle. So if I was to draw out my actual timetable, these boxes would be different sizes. Just as a side note, the pages I'm showing you here are more for ideas rather than exact recreations. I know they won't suit everybody's needs, not everybody has six periods a day, and some people have regular after school commitments that they might want to write down as well. This is, as I said, just for ideas. So first idea, timetable. Moving on to the next one though, we have a yearly timeline and a year at a glance page. So the way these ones differ is that the yearly timeline is all about the timing of your units. So each of these boxes represents a different course that you could be teaching. So I've written year eight science, year nine science, 11 phys chem, 12 chemistry, and 12 physics. In the middle section along the top, we have each of the week numbers and then you just color in the number of weeks that is needed for each of the topics in accordance with the course outlines that you give your students at the start of the year, just so that you can make sure that you're keeping to time. So we can see that in term one for the first seven weeks, our first topic is forensics, then for week eight to 11 and one to five of term two, we have science fair, earth science for the rest of that term and then the first three weeks of the next term, then magnets and then animals. On this, you could also put generally where your assignments are going to be or assessments. So I know that towards the end of most of my topics, I have an assessment for my students. So I could put down what kind of assessment those things would be. Just using little symbols or signifiers or letters. You could also, if you wanted to use this one kind of as a countdown by crossing off each week as you went through it. So you can see how much time you have for each of the topics you're teaching. Onto the year at a glance. This is just like a regular year at a glance you'd have in a journal. So it has a full year calendar and then down the bottom here there's a key. So we have holiday periods which are in blue and those are the parts that I've sectioned off with these blue boxes. We have staff only days in brown, so week zero at the start of the year and then the staff PD days that are already on our schedule. And then I've also put in grey here sick. So you could use this to record what days you personally were off school as well. This can be particularly important if you have to keep track of the number of sick days you do take or if there was any kind of administration around that that you needed to do. On to the next one. So for this one, we have a course overview that has a list of your students down the side and then pretty much anything else that you'd want to record for each of them on the next couple of pages. So things that I've put down here is obviously the student list. I put LS and GT, so learning support and then gifted and talented. And you could just tick off to see which of your students fall into those categories. Instead of putting them into the columns, you could just have a little signifier or symbol that you put next to a student's name so you can see at a glance which ones might need a little bit of extra support and might need extension. In this one, I've also put down a summary of 2018 grades. Again, as you can probably tell, this is um not real students. <laughs> it's student A, student B, student C, etc. But having a summary of their grades from 2018 or from the year prior can be helpful at the start of the year to identify your students that might need some more support or might need a little extra. I've also put in a section for PAT results. I'm not sure if everybody does PAT testing, but it is a standardized type of testing we do here in New Zealand in the categories of reading comprehension, writing, listening, and mathematics. And then I've also just left a little space for notes. And then on this first Dutch door, it's just a summary of their grades for the year. So the A, B's, C's and D's up here represent the four different criteria we have in MYP topics. So criteria A being knowing and understanding, B being inquiring and designing, so planning investigations, C being processing and evaluating, so collecting the data from the experiments, processing it, evaluating whether your method was actually good, and then D which is all about reflecting on the impacts of science. So in the first topic here, we assess A and D, in the second we assess B and C, in the third we assess A, in the fourth it's B and C, in the fifth it's A, and then in the sixth it's D. Again, this course is actually made up, it's not how we actually assess our year eights. It's close to, but not quite. Then at the end here, we have a summary column for A, B, C, D, the awarding of their end of year grades, their overall score, and then their overall grade for the year. Given this pretend class only has 20 students, there's also a lot of space down the bottom here for other notes. So things that I've written down could be any keys or signifiers that you wanted to keep track of, 
any assessment dates that you needed to keep track of. The space down here is actually big enough for sticky notes, so it could be class-related sticky notes. Any lesson routines or anything else that you can think of that's important to note and be able to see at a glance. Flipping over, the next part we have is a topic. So this is for topic one, and because of the Dutch door you can see each of the student names lined up against these two pages. Along the top of this one I've just written out MTWF repeated again, just to say that those would be the days we'd have the lessons on, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, etc. For this kind of a thing it can be used for something like an absence log or work completion. Other ideas I wrote down were that you could record homework or behaviours, any achievements, any time you had to contact home or any time that extension work was given. So for instance here for student B we have a little star that represents that they finished their work to a high standard and then eventually we started having a little E to show that extension work was given to them. Here the little L could mean late, so student D was late on Monday, late on Monday, late on Monday and Tuesday, and the nice thing about this is that you can start to identify patterns. For student F we have a little exclamation point meaning that maybe they didn't complete all their work or they were acting out in class, and a little email icon here to say that you emailed home. The dots that we see around here could be when students weren't there, so maybe on this Friday there was a full class or full school activity which meant that the students weren't in class. Whereas student J just does seem to be absent quite a lot, and that could be for a variety of reasons really. But again this kind of thing is nice for the identification of patterns. Because obviously we're teachers and we really don't have that much time outside of all the other things we need to do. You can see there are no signifiers in here for the usual. So students who were present, did their work to a reasonable standard, nothing special to comment, those ones don't have signifiers in here. For this I've made the topic just go across one spread of the Dutch door, but you could use multiple pages if you had more that you wanted to record. On this space I've also shown that yes, the sticky note does indeed fit down the bottom, so things that you could put on your sticky notes would be like quick to-dos that you just wanted to jot down in a hurry and stick in. Or it could be a note of where you got to in your last lesson so you know where to kick off next time, that kind of thing. And then the stuff I have up here is just assessment data. So for criteria B we have four strands, for criteria C we have five strands, and I personally like to record what I've assigned the student in each of those strands as well as their overall grade. Flipping over we have topic 2, and here I have a similar idea again, but instead of using symbols I've just used coloured dots. So maybe blue was anywhere where the work got done quite quickly or to a really good extent. Again the little E means extension work was given, and the little male symbol meant that I contacted home. Over here we have a section for a assessment where they had to pick a topic themselves, so there's a column to write down what their topic was. Again, a section for each of the strands, and then the overall grade, and then some other space here for notes. Some other things that you could note down in these larger spaces are things like any department goals that you have related to your class, any notes about students or groups that do or don't work well together, you could put down a small version of a seating chart, people to contact, so for instance that class's dean or form group teacher, and then students preferred names. Again, different information is going to be important for different people, so it's really up to you. The reason that I don't use something like this in my journal is because I like to do all of this digitally. I have all of this information summarised on Microsoft Excel where I can quite easily pull data together so I don't have to rewrite it, do quick calculations to find averages, use conditional formatting so that everything's colour coded so I can very easily see who's doing well and who's doing not so well, and a whole bunch of other different functionality that would be a lot more time consuming to achieve in a bullet journal. If you wanted any more information about how I use Excel to track data for my classes though, do drop a comment below to let me know. After this one, honestly it was getting late in the piece, so I don't have any other layouts drawn out for you, but I do have some ideas. So going through this one, other page ideas that you could include in a teacher bullet journal or as part of your teaching related spreads would be a why do I teach page. It's always good to reflect on why we actually do what we do because 
sometimes life can get hard and it's good to have that kind of reality check to bring us back to the core of why we're there and what we're doing. Until you get used to it, it could be a good idea to have a bell schedule, especially helpful if you're starting in a new school or if your school's bell schedule has recently changed. An idea that was floating around the teachers that bullet journal page was roll call questions. So a question that you ask your student when you're taking the role, so instead of saying yes or present, they give you an answer to the question. A page related to your classroom layout or measurements, especially for teachers who do have one classroom they teach in and have the freedom or flexibility to decorate it or rearrange it how they want. Pages for seating charts, with student names either written in pencil or on sticky notes so that you can move them around if you need to. Professional development logs or ideas, so areas of your practice that you want to develop or professional development that you went on and need to keep a record of. Any professional goals that you have and the tracking of those. Things like Bloom's taxonomy or command term glossary, depending on the kind of curriculum you're teaching. A student project progress tracker. So this one's kind of like a sticker chart where you have certain milestones or tasks that need to be completed for a project for the students in your class. And then when you check in with them, you can check off how far they've gotten. Of course, you could always make this a one-use thing where it is very much like a sticker chart or a tick the box kind of thing. Or you could make it a little bit more like a Kanban board where you have different stages and then you just move the students' names across either by writing in pencil or using sticky notes. A list of any class contracts or class rules that you have. So rules that you and your class have decided on together as appropriate conduct and consequences. Any emergency contacts or procedures. A log of any online accounts that you're given or that you set up. And not necessarily their passwords, because I don't really like the idea of writing passwords down in books that could go missing, but maybe password hints or something like that. A list of your class sizes, which can be really helpful, especially when you need to make photocopies of things. Something that's quite popular I've seen around is a teacher dashboard, which is really just a page or a spread that has a collection of sticky notes on it so that you can quickly jot down notes and don't need to worry about the messiness. A homework given or assignment log, so that you can see when you actually gave homework out and when you made it due. Any meeting schedules or meeting notes that you have. A marking log or marking workflow, so again, could be done kind of like that Kanban style. Or it could be done more like the topic planners that I've made, where you just have a list of the different marking that you need to do, and then the different stages of that. So maybe something like assessment completed, corrected, feedback given, grades uploaded, something like that. Depending on how your workflow works, of course. A list of funny things that students say. A school-specific future log, where you just record any of the school events that you have coming up. Unit, topic, or course reflections, so that when you come to reteach that in later years, you know what worked well and what needs some more work. Topic plans, as I showed you before. Where to find, or when did I last? Where to find in particular, because I always find myself looking for the same things over and over again because I've forgotten where they're usually located. That could be for things like forms, or equipment, or whatever else. A when did I last page could be used for tasks that you really don't need to do at a regular interval, but it's good to remind yourself of when you last completed that. Brain break ideas, so ways to break up long lessons, so that your students don't feel burnt out. Any inquiry or appraisal notes that you have. A list of places that offer teacher discounts. I really need to make myself one of these, because I swear I always find out after the fact, and I could have saved like 20% and I didn't, or whatever. A list of 5, 10, and 15 minute tasks for when you have a little bit of spare time. <laughs> spare time. The rolling weekly idea, which is a page that's just set up with a simple grid that has the classes that you have along the top, and then the days of the week down the side. And then you just use sticky notes to say what you did in the last lesson, based on which day it was on. That one could probably use a little bit more of an explanation, so I have a link in the description box below to Alexandra Plans, who does use one of those. And then the last idea I had were any pages that you have for co-curricular or extracurricular commitments. Now, it's all good and well that we have all of these ideas for pages, but some of them will be useful for you, and some of them certainly won't be. I know that, especially at the start of a new school year, I have some really good intentions to do 
all the things and record all the stuff, but then the realness hits and you really just don't have time for all of that, along with, you know, being a good teacher. So if there were some ideas here that sound cool to you, for sure do try them out, but don't be too hard on yourself if they don't work for you or you don't end up filling them in. It's all about finding a system that does work for you, that you find useful and can accommodate into our already very busy schedules. Thank you for watching team, if you liked today's video please do make sure to give this one a big thumbs up, and if you wanted to see more from me, feel free to go check out another one of my videos. Until next time, bye!